Good morning, everyone, and morning. welcome to the March 8th, 2024 Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Um, we do have, although while not in the room, we do have a full quorum with our folks online. Um, so we are all set and we're going to continue on with an active meeting. Um, our first item is a actually a roll call of the voting members as well as any other member online. Great. So we have Alan Paul. Yes. Rick Shanae. Here. Peter Freilinger. It's not here. Marvin Gates. Yes. Robin Saunders. Here. And then we have our alternates, Portia Hirschman. Here. And Robert Odlin is not with us. And we have Rachel Hendrickson. Here. And Jean Marie Katarina and John Anderson yeah. are here. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Again, thank you all for being here. Our next item on the agenda is to view the minutes of February 9th, 2024. Any comments? We'll approve it, Mr. Chair. We have a move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, I would ask all in favor, yes. raise your hand or say aye. One, this two. is Robin, I say aye. Okay, thank you. I show that to be passed. Okay. Um, the next item that we have is the nomination of a member or a liaison to the Transportation Committee. We have talked about this. I have not had anybody contact myself. I don't know if there is someone who would like to uh, raise their hand for that. We could also wait until um, Marvin is going off the committee. So we'll get a new member hopefully next month. We okay. could wait until you have a fully. Right. I, I have staff. not heard of any appointments or. Uh, and if you alter. Okay. Oh, sorry, Robin. Uh, Wednesday. Can it be an alternate member? Could it be Portia? I mean, I know she's already on the transportation committee. So um, We've I was just wondering it. if it could be an alternate. Okay. And what I, what I, my understanding is that she, um, she would have to give up her transportation committee membership to do it. And so we don't, we don't <laughs> think that, of course, I talked about that when we got here this morning. We don't think it will work. Um, but I can confirm with Tody, uh, if she could be dual roles, it would, I think Portia would probably be okay yeah. with that, I, <laughs> but I, I don't have that. I right did now. have a conversation with Tody about that, mm -hmm. um, and that is not something that we can do. Okay, okay, that's so what Porsche I was. Porsche is the only person on the committee that could not <laughs> be not the uh, liaison. That's so, nice to have one down. Yeah. <laughs> Porsche is out. Yeah. And just to reflect note wise, Peter is here. Sorry about that, folks. Morning, Peter. So, would you like to wait? Until we have a full committee? Yeah, I think. Or yeah, I propose to table it. Yeah, I agree to table it. Yeah, I think we should probably do that until it, it would be much better if we have somebody <clears throat> who wants to make that commitment. Sure. It'll be more effective. <laughs> Certainly. That might be helpful, if, especially Jean Marie, as we look at applications for prospective members right. for long range to see if there's, I think maybe that's something we look for is like who's interested in transportation. Right. right. That's what you guys want to have somebody do. I'm not in charge That's of the nominations. Okay. I pass it along. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would appreciate that. Uh, before we get into what I will call the meat of the meeting, I would like to make one announcement. Um, it's, it's more of a recognition of somebody who's worked hard for the town. Um, but recently, um, John Cusack, right? Krasnick. 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 Thank you. I was close. Is Bill here today? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, John had a uh, very uh, uh, 
It had an unexpected situation. Yeah, and was rushed to the hospital Ooh. last week. Uh, John is the chair of SEDCO. Hmm. Um, so he's, he's doing someone, well. someone who has, you know, been part of the uh, city, uh, or excuse me, part of the town's committees for quite some time. So I just wanted to make people aware that he's had an incident. Uh, he is coming back. He's doing <coughs> well. And he should be leaving the hospital on Saturday. Okay. So just a little thing to throw out there. Um, if you would, just keep him in mind um, for a speedy recovery. Um, the next item on our agenda this morning is the review and possible action on Chapter 405B. Site plan standards and commercial design standards merger slash update. And we're specifically looking at layout standards and architecture. And at this point, I would turn it over to Autumn. All right. So at our meeting last time, um, we talked about just putting, cleaning this up a bit and putting it all together in front of you. A lot of site utilization and layout and the architecture standards are really just a consolidation. We've added and tweaked a few things, but not as many as, say, landscaping or lighting. Um, because we know we're going to have to come back with these village or area plans in the future. So what's in front of you is that final draft. I'm happy to go over it section by section, or if there's any specific comments that you want to make sure is included in these. If you all are on um, board with this, the next step would go to ordinance committee. And then um, from there, possibly town council and then planning board. Um, so are, are we at a point where we want to submit like the entire kind We're of really close. to them? Right. So um, would as opposed to taking up their time with pieces, should we give them the whole plan? Well, landscaping is already gone. So landscaping, lands, okay. landscaping is a big chunk. And right. once um, landscaping is going to go to council on May 1st. And so once that piece is done, this could probably be the finish where it all comes together uh, because there won't be much in those commercial design standards left, but that's really the plan. Okay. So, so I, I guess my question is, is are people in favor of giving them this piece next or do we want to do it in one shot? Well, it's not... Um, How much is one shot? The one shot um, <laughs> is chair of ordinance. <laughs> well, you would Small be looking time. at the one shot, you would be looking at things you've already approved. So, the way I've sort of broken it up is so these pieces uh, make sense, and then the combination is easier. So, you're not looking at everything at once. Okay. I mean, I'm just. Yeah, I don't know if you would want to look at them. 80 page reduction document. We, I, <laughs> the commercial design standards are now down to from 90, I think, to 60 pages. And when landscaping comes out, it'll be down to about 20 pages. And then it just has reduced incrementally. But these are the final two. Okay. Um, are there things in here that people are going to get wound up about and then show up? You not know what I'm saying? Not in, in these, these not in these two. These right. two are really sort of basic. Clean up. Clean yeah. Up. Right. Yeah. Well, one, <clears throat> the one question I had about that was we talked kind of not even briefly, but kind of a, um, as an aside. The new Cafe Luda opened up and um, the parking there has been mm -hmm. bizarre. And do we want to talk about that parking with respect to this parking standard? Or I, I don't know. Uh, it's just it, it, well, it, it's come up. So. This is site utilization and layout, yeah, and then yeah. architecture, and then for the last item on your um, agenda today, there's sort of a parking standard oh, okay, dump good. for us, and that's our next step. Okay, it's sure. a it. separate discussion, I think. So we'll have to talk about so many land uses and yeah, well, that's areas. Kind of why, yeah, so okay, this is like the basic stuff, and that's why I think this is part of the cleanup and. Sure. kind of gotten tedious looking at it um <laughs> and then we'll get this over with and then the meat comes with yeah, parking because parking is point, parking right? is in zoning ordinance okay. and this is site plan ordinance Got it. so okay yeah. okay thanks for clarification and uh, if our experience is any worth taking it in chunks and reviewing it gives you actually the focus on that particular thing as opposed to getting lost in the 
I've, I've felt pretty successful in chunking it up in reasonable bits. It's still pretty big, yeah. Um, but I feel pretty good about that. Uh, Ordinance committee has been really. I I think it's been a positive experience, and at council, I think with when we did lighting, um, that went that was easy to understand because it was just that consolidated yeah. thing. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm just mm -hmm. asking. Them. Mm -hmm. Well, it, means, it may make sense to to foreshadow what comes next. Like, here's the whole list of the things that we're we're working on, and this is right. this piece, and, and that I way they get a sense of it, but close, it's not. Which is, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I've done since yeah. last year. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, do you need a motion to move this forward? No, I don't yes, think so. We need a, do yeah. we need official move? All right. Mm -hmm. So then I would ask. So move. So <laughs> move. So we have, a, we have a, a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Rick. Um, so is there any additional discussion about moving this section forward to the Ordinance Committee? Rachel has her hand up. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I, I am just, because I'm sitting home, I'm a little confused on something here. Uh, and that is, um, if we have a question or a concern about something in here, uh, I have a concern about uh, section 20 and the site utilization. It, should we talk about this before we vote on a motion or do we have this is the discussion. Forbid us from talking about that. Is, I guess my question is, if you still have a concern. What section are you talking about, Rachel? I'm talking about under site design, section 20. Uh, I put it on page seven, the parking lot design. Oh, no, it's like parking side. There's a, it says every effort shall be made to reduce the scale of parking lots for aesthetic and stormwater reasons. Um, it, the problem with applying that is, is there's almost no standards for the, the planning. In Rachel, other words, um, oh. it's only the eye of the beholder. I, I think she's she? in the next section. Rachel, I think you're Rachel, in the next we're, section. Yeah. We're confused. She's on page, yeah, page, page five. I've got it on page five of the draft. I printed it out. Parking number eight, parking lot design. Okay, got it. And then every a, effort shall be made to reduce the scale of parking lots for aesthetic and stormwater reasons. That becomes in the eye of the beholder for the planning board. Um, and every effort becomes the developer saying, I made every effort, so I'm okay. And the planning board saying, well, you need more effort. In other words, there's <laughs> not, a lot of, not a lot of standards there. Uh, and to me, it it uh, address it goes along with the concern about maximum parking, not minimum parking. Um, one of the things I thought about in terms of maximum parking, and it's possible it could go here or it could go into the the section on parking, is uh, having something that in let's say that indicates that if a developer uh, or an applicant wants to increase the parking lot over the minimum standards by more than let's say 10%, 15%, choose some sort of a percent, then um, that has to be approved by the planning board uh, and have some standards. It, it can be aesthetic and stormwater reasons. Uh, it can be requiring them to prove that it's necessary for their business design. I mean, there are a lot of standards that could be used, but the, the planning board needs something that says when it can jump in and say, you have too many spaces here. Not too few, but too, we, we have too few someplace else. We never have too many. Then we have no, no handle on how we handle that. Rachel, I think we should probably do the maximum parking in the actual zoning ordinance parking standards, the next section. Okay. And this, this sentence that you're pointing out, it's the existing sentence. So I didn't change it. I'd love to. Yeah, if you well, want. So, so would I. Um, and it, all of a sudden, once once all of the underbrush is cleared by the work. I'm on page 
so, uh, sorry, so that we can... one second. Page five, parking lot design. Let me pull it up for you. As I said, one of the um, once all of the underbrush was cleared. It's this way. The first page jumped oh. out at me as one of the problems that we've had um, when a developer wants to put a lot more parking in than than might be necessary. Uh, the only guidelines the planning board has is every effort shall be made to reduce, and, and I have no idea what that means. That that allows for for an argument rather than standards. Would it maybe be appropriate after we go through the parking standards and define some parameters for waivers for maximum and minimums maybe, and then we come back and fix this sentence when we know maybe, I think also there's some other, other things going on and other committees that may affect it too. So maybe that I'll mark yeah, it as something I, we need to fix. I think that I think that would be fine. I just didn't want this whole effort to somehow or other to be lost if all of a sudden something if we vote or if you folks vote to send this forward um today, then uh I didn't want to lose the opportunity because it is something we've wrestled with frequently. Got it. And happy to talk about uh, Cafe Luna and the history there. <laughs> All right, are, are you all comfortable with just highlighting this and knowing we need to come back to this? I sort of anticipate that we'll have to come back to these two sections as we do these village plans and parking. So that's why um, these are sort of limited in changes, if that makes sense. Okay. I agree with your suggestion on them. Okay, thanks Robin. Oh, ready. Any other comments? I I realize that we have a motion on the table and I need to take a vote on this, but I have to say I'm still a little confused. Um, so I will go through the voting process. What are you confused about? I don't mean that. Well, no, I, I guess I'm back to my original question. Personally, and that is, is do we want to move this forward now or do we want to hold it until it's what we want and then present it to the ordinance committee instead what, of having them having to redo something? What um, do you want to change? What do you foresee <clears throat> changing to it? I understand what you said and I, I agree with We'll address it, but not now. Well, it's in a different. It's in a different. It's ordinance. in a different. Yeah. It's in a different section. Yeah. So. It's not part of site plan. Uh, all right. That was because it's in zoning right. parking, and so it's two different chapters and two different processes. But we're still. But zoning. Gonna have another discussion because, down the road, and then we're going to come back and revisit this we, section. We may again. because I think the discussion in zoning may inform other things that we are not aware of right now that we need to fix. Is that that's what I'm thinking? You know, we may find that there's even more things after we go through the parking that we want to. Oh, we didn't think about that. Right. But and I and I get your point. But I'm trying to wrap up the site plan consolidation process too. Yeah. So we can move on to other things. And then it's just small tweaks as I, we go. It's not a big tweak then. It's a line item. Yeah. Um, but I think the other thing that this doing it like this does is this is the cleanup and consolidation. You know, so that's mm -hmm. what the ordinance committee is going to be looking right. at. Do we yeah. do we put it together well and do we do we take care of the duplicates and, and right. all of that? And then next, after you've gone through all the other things, we'll have to um, come back. So this is an easy so I meant cleanup. reconciliation coming right. forward, but this yeah. is this is a compilation. Yeah. Of yes, yes, I eliminating think, the. I think it would as reestablishing the baseline to make right. future enhancements and improvements to that are more specific. So I think it's good to always clean it up, make it more simple. So that way it helps ordinance as we yeah. go forward to make those adjustments. Okay. Anything we can do to make it easier is right. okay. why you guys aren't stressing about did you put something new in here? It's well, really more right. about... and remember that people on ordinance, folks on ordinance, 
this is not their bailiwick or you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying so yeah. so it's like I'd rather have it as you say John you know vetted and so when it comes to ordinance it's an opportunity for the public to weigh in the initial public weigh in any more concerns whatever we work on it in ordinance and then we send it to council where it's another hearing so okay uh if, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all- Mr. Into... Chair? Yes. Hi, it's Marvin. I, I was on mute, pardon me. I have a question and maybe it's a technical question. I'm a little confused though about uh, but your motion in the sense of what I hear the discussion being focused on, which is what Rachel brought up. And specifically, so the motion is to send this to ordinance with the stipulation that it come back to us to do, for example, what Rachel just uh, pointed out as far as cleanup changes, or are we sending this to ordinance as Councillor Katarina, as I, I don't mean to put words into anybody's mouth, but what I understood, uh, Council, you, Councillor, to say is that it's going to ordinance and then it's going to uh, council itself. So, uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's my motion, Barbara. So let, let me clarify what I meant: it is to allow the consolidation work that is represented by this to move forward to ordinance and ultimately to council. There's no stipulation, but there is every expectation and every and, and every certainty that we will see this come back for revision that is material in content in a way that this is not. This is not a content um, change. This is a consolidation and a conformity change. Um, so I'm moving that we bring the con uh, consolidation and conformity changes forward to um, ordinance and ultimately to town council, recognizing that we've got more work to do in the future. Thank you. The more work has to do with the Sony ordinance and not this document. Mm -hmm. Will any of that work cause us to have to revise language here? Well, it, it might, but that's I'm not I'm gonna say, yeah, but that's gonna, mm. Yes, I think it it might, right? So when we look at the zoning ordinance and we look at parking, depending on what you all recommend for that, and if that gets adopted, it may require additional changes in this section. We may say, oh, we don't like this thing that it says um, you have to do. Like queuing for drive through lanes, for instance, is really generic in this. When we do parking standards, we're going to decide on specific queue links, and we're going to need to update this or take the queuing out of this and leave it in zoning. But that's a bigger, broader public discussion. So this is just like John said, this is the cleanup to get the baseline. Because right now we have things over here oh, and yeah. we have things over here. And this is just putting them all together so we know what we have, so we know what we need to And we're address. accepting the recommendation mm -hmm. from staff and from our ordinance committee um, liaison helpful here that that's the right way to go, the right way to sequence. Do the consolidation first and then go through the process on changing content. I guess I do share... Um, Alan's concerned that we are submitting a document, I guess, with an asterisk that we may have to reword this in light of future work that we're going to do on the parking stands and the zoning ordinance that we haven't yet looked at. Right. Well, you're and, also sending it with an asterisk that we're going to do eight village plans too. Okay. So it's it's yeah, so those it's are placeholders. It's the framework right. to do the rest of the work, and we've been talking about this for four months. And we haven't added yeah. any content changes okay. to it. And I feel like if we can get this off the table, then we can do the hard work, right? Sure. But we got to get, I, this committee has been really good focusing with the content piece at a time. And we've been able to do lighting and landscaping. And landscaping, we did the content work um, because it wasn't in another ordinance or anything. But we really have to talk about parking standards to do okay. that. Right. I'd like to keep them separate so we can continue on this consolidation path and then we'll look at zoning. Because we may in fact find that we need to change lots of things once mm -hmm. we start into parking. We may need to do parking in different zoning districts. There's a oh, lot of ways for it to go. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I would say from a developer's perspective, having this cleaned up right away puts efficiency in the system. And so that's great. And then, you know, if it takes us two months or six months, we've got at least two months or six months right, worth of a, right. a, a more efficient ordinance that everyone can take advantage of. I, I'd just like to weigh in and say, I, I agree a hundred percent with Karen and Autumn. And I'd like to give the ordinance committee this, giving them the heads up that says, hey, we've made a lot of, you know, consolidation efficiencies and consistencies work here, but we'd like to reserve the right to say, here may be some more that may be coming your way. So I think it gives the ordinance committee time to see what, what good work we've been doing and they'll understand when the, when the changes come that we're continuing to do this consistent work. And you know, if there's anything that developers relish, it's consistency. So I, I, I strongly support the move to push it forward to ordinance committee and we'll vote aye. I have a question. Um, any substantive changes in this? Not in this It's all right. just taken it's from other consolidation, pieces. a few uh -huh. cleanups and words, yes. All right. And I'll do, that. when we go to ordinance committee, if you all move it, um, I'll bring the color coded and the very specific. That would be helpful, yes. Because <laughs> we had the color coded last time and uh, we just wanted to say, let's yep, look yep, at yep. what the clean version is. Yep. And that way you know where everything comes from. Um, oh, so if you want to just take a quick look just to see. <laughs> no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, highlights, you know, the black was the right. green and so on, but it it does say. Yeah, there right. was no April does a good job. It was uh, more April. Of, Autumn does it. I throw all these. Seasons season. on the yeah. autumn does a great job coming when she comes to ordinance. So making it, sure we more see what the things are. Yeah. Um, would you be looking at this in April? Uh, possibly April or May. It okay. depends on right. schedule. I was just curious. Okay. All right. Any additional discussion? I have one more question, Mr. Chair. Uh, I know. I know we want to move this forward as an item. Uh, and Rachel, or excuse me, Robin. Uh, did I understand what you just said as a kind of caveat to moving this forward with the understanding? Uh, I thought you said something like the understanding that if this needs something more. And my question is, is that an amendment that's being offered or uh, or Peter? No, no, no amendment. Know. It's It's just meant to give council a heads up that as we work through all of these um ordinances and see potential uh inconsistencies or where there could be inconsistencies we may we may come forward to do an amendment but at this time we believe this work to be uh very complete and comprehensive okay uh can we do a roll call sure. vote because we can't see people certainly certainly um so I'll start with online. Robin Saunders? Aye. Marvin Gates? No. Peter Freilinger? Aye. Uh, Rick Cheney? Yes. And Alan Paul? Yes. Motion passes. And it actually is a point of order, I guess. Um, when, you, when you're at hybrid meetings, technically under state law, you're supposed to take a roll call vote. OK. So just oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. no, fine. If I can see hands, that's a different thing. But I yeah. know, but yeah, this I can't. Wants, that was one of the deals with getting hyper teams. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. A point of, point of order, and as a member, as the member who's going to probably, this will be his last meeting in a sense, I imagine, uh, obviously, depending on uh, what the nomination committee is the council does between now and our next meeting. Uh, I was wondering, since I think when the meeting started, I provided a quorum, but is there a way as a point of order to have me switch places in a sense with Portia and make her the uh, uh, voting member here and me uh, step away from it uh, and act uh, in a sense as just a member of the community. I'm conscious that, of the fact that I'm voting. And that is, that is 
totally the responsibility of the appointments committee. Mm -hmm. And that is not something that I can change. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. That is correct. Um, item number five is review and discuss planning CIP request for 2025. North Scarborough Running Hill Master Plan. Mr. Chair, just as uh, uh, just to let people know, um, my property abuts this directly, so I don't want anyone to think I have a conflict of interest or anything. If I comment <laughs> on things, but I'm a direct letter to this. So, just the last section in the architectural standards that uh, you all just moved forward to ordinance committee, there are several reserved sections. So you have Village, Eight Corners, Oak Hill, Dunstan, North Scarborough, Pine Point, and those are all reserved with the understanding that more work is going to be done, and most likely this would be the steering committee for that work. And so as part of the planning CIP process, I've included a village plan or a master plan every year um, for the next five years until we work through these. And um, each one of these would be designed to address architecture, transportation, the street layout, if there's anything specifically different for that area, um, the character of the area, it may change um, height standards. So it's a really an involved process that will be specific to each of these areas. The first one that I've put in for the 2025 CIP request is North Scarborough Running Hill Master Plan. I've, excuse me, I've increased it from a village plan to a master plan because it's encompassing a greater land area. And in your packet is the actual language that is part of my budget request. And this is just an overlay for you to understand the zoning that exists today with the yellow line, the actual um, MTA alignment of the Gorham connector. Oh, and, yeah. okay. and so it crosses our running hill and our running mm -hmm. hill two zone, um, and then a whole lot of RF, rural farming. And then we have this TVC area and this BOR area in North Scarborough. And where, where are the, 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 uh... The uh, town and country, the um, BOR areas. I can't. Oh, it's they're hard to see. They're just right here oh, and right, right here. Yeah, the, the, this is killing me on the kind of one. Sorry. <laughs> literally can't see anything on this except for sorry. Oh, right, don't light the dark green thing. So, um, and is the is the MT alignment through Scarborough too? I just see these two. Yeah. It's this. Yeah. yeah. And the, here's the here's the here's the turnpike okay. right there. And then that's the this is the this is the North Scarborough okay. village. This is the uh what do you call it, the running hill or whatever. Running hill, running hill. Gotcha. Okay. My property's right here, just yeah, so yeah. you'll know this is where my house is right yeah. there, which okay. you, you know. You I do know, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just to give you an idea yeah, of what the this Karen, the, sorry to be the ADA issue here. Do you, you think Chairman, I don't think this is an issue, but and I think I've told you this before. I, I represent uh, Ken Grand and who owns a substantial mm -hmm. portion right, mm -hmm. of the area in the yellow form. We can't <coughs> yeah. the, right, right here. Next to right. me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> For the purpose of this yeah, day's sure. discussion, yeah. it's just really to introduce the idea to you all. Yeah. Right. And right. that um, if it's approved at council, I would envision you all be in the steering committee to work with the consultants mm -hmm. to put this process into place. Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how, oh, thanks, Eric, of how, um, oh, very nice. This would proceed in the future. So it would be area by area. And then I would envision using you all to further define the location because Red Brook is in this. We have, you know, Red Brook might be the boundary. We may include some of the B2 area on the other side. So that's a little fluid at this point. But as we go through the budget process and find out, you know, where we're going to go. So this would kick off next year if it gets yeah. approved. Well, yeah. Again, just like the full disclosure. Can we have one yeah. conversation yeah. going on here? Because I'm getting. <laughs> From a disclosure standpoint, I am a member of SEDCO. 
and SEDCO is actively involved with what's happening with the uh, the potential connector yes. between 95 and the traffic circle on 114. Mm -hmm. so, this is the power Right. Yeah. And so I just want people to know that I'm talking two ways two about this. So right. sure. If people feel as a conflict, yeah. just let me know. And I don't think the, the work that SEDCO wants to, we've been meeting with the Gorham Economic Development Corporation. Oh, okay. And so there's a there's a focus of, hey, from an economic development standpoint, can we um, look at what's happening in this in this corridor? Um, and I don't think it has it it has any conflict and and should can be incorporated into that right. master plan. You would be Senco would be at the table yeah. for the master plan. Right. So right. there would be um, this yeah, group and up. other groups too because right. a lot of things would be encompassed. So that's why I put this one as the first one. Yes, it might be the. <laughs> So most it's difficult, one, it's but active. it's the one that has the and, biggest question mark. But it has mark. a big impact, um, yeah. and lots of decisions need to be made. So right. that's I just wanted to give you a heads up for that one, and how that framework will come before you in the future. And I'll keep you posted. Uh oh, Eric Strong. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, then the, oh, next one, nice. the next one that I have for 2026 is the Dunstan area. Uh, and that's also subject to change, but I also included the um, this from the comp plan. So the comp plan sort of defines our villages or areas of town to think about. And so this is what we would be tracking to. In the Dunstan area, I'm proposing it as the next because there's quite a bit of vacant land and some opportunity for redevelopment still. Okay. So I foresee that one being um, the next one. I guess one question I have is you look to the other ones and you mentioned eight corners. Um, eight yeah. corners actually ends up being kind of very closely adjacent to what we're defining for North Scarborough and Running Hill. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, that's why I think that's why is, yeah. I, it's yeah. a little bigger. So we may end up consolidating those. Yeah, okay. That would make sense yeah. to mm -hmm. me. And there is sort of a continuity of that from the exactly. Libby Corner and all the rest yes. That, yes. that would make. Mm -hmm. Little corner, you know, they've got a little side. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not really not in there. Yeah, we but, we think it's actually more appropriate to extend. Yeah, really, okay, because it especially depending on what you're going to do on the other side, if it's similar, if it's it needs to all work together. Well, exactly. It's and strange then, that you've either got three, which is North Scarborough, um, Running Hill, and Eight Quarters, or you've got one, which is that whole quarter. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Yeah. And when Autumn and I met to sort of look at this, we found we found it very difficult to sever the influences right. of um, yeah. you know what's going on and in, in all the different pieces. So it made sense to pull it all together. Okay, okay. good question. So I know I know one of the outputs of the transportation master plan is going to identify areas of further study. Mm -hmm. So does that 100k encompass and anticipate that, or will there be like two separate CIP requests in the future? One. That could be oh, this master plan and one in Angela's. Angela like, has one for transportation impact. And okay. this is just a master plan, which would talk about land use, everything for okay. just this area. So there'll be two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Robin, I understand you have a question. Yes. I'm wondering if um, on the North Scarborough Running Hill Road um, master plan, are there, uh, is the intention to include Gorham in this and or Westbrook since um, yeah. it's so close. Okay, good. Yes. I just wanted we to make sure we weren't have to, yes. doing it in a vacuum. Thank you. Yes, definitely. And I would think, um, that would make sense given the Route 22 corridor. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, because I know one of the thoughts way back when, like when this turnpike connector thing started in 1988, which people don't really aren't aware of, um, that you know th there was talk of you know if you get a lot of that traffic off from there then you can do the villagey whatever mm -hmm. whatever including Borum and potentially back down towards Westbrook mm -hmm. towards Smiling Hill Farm area right. and whatever so <laughs> anyway mm -hmm. okay so there's no action needed on that. I just wanted to, I mentioned it last time and I wanted to put it in front of you so you would know what was going on. In the <coughs> and hopefully we'll get it approved. We may meet yes. Autumn on this. Is the, is part of that also, is it gonna strictly talk about um, the zoning or is it gonna 
touch on sewer and water because there's a couple of different It's going to have plans. to touch on all of it. Right. That's why this one is bigger. Yeah. And I call it a master plan and put a little bit more money into it because mm -hmm. it's going to be. Because they're about. Because that's you know, always been. That's the yeah, that is the decision right. point that's going to have exactly. to be made. And there's um, a couple of different options yeah. for that, mm -hmm. that it, which involves Westbrook as well. Westbrook, I was so, going to say, yeah. 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 So, so we've been talking with them. Um, no, that? no, there was still a path um, uh, about a year ago. I spent some time with both Westbrook and Southport so looking at the main mall area. Yeah, they for to serve Running Hill Road. Yeah, they you know South Portland does have a path. It's more secured than right. the West That's the Westbrook right. one. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So Westbrook makes a lot of sense if they choose to increase their capacity. Yeah. So I'll plan on updating you all in May. Um, with how it's going through the budget process. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. Hi, it's Marvin. I have a question, very brief question. And uh, in your packet, Autumn, on what is, uh, I see is page 57. Is that 57 from the, from the comprehensive plan? I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, uh, there's the map there. Uh, the above map shows commonly referenced neighborhoods. This was so good to see because in the three years I've been on the committee, people talk about areas and I'm never quite sure what the uh, what the boundaries are. So I'm pleased to see it again here from our work much earlier on the comprehensive plan. My question is this, is a part of the uh, master plan to differentiate what constitutes a neighborhood versus what constitutes a village. Obviously there are five or six villages uh, referenced here, but then you look at all of these neighborhoods and I think, oh, well, there are more than five or six villages. There are all these neighborhoods. Are, they, are the neighborhoods going to become villages, I suppose? And is that part of the discussion of the master plan? I uh, don't. I don't know the answer to that, Marvin. I think as we go through each individual one, it will be uh, contemplated. North Scarborough Master Plan, what may come out of that is there's, um, if we call it the Running Hill Master Plan, we may end up with a village, we may end up with a rural area, we may end up with a couple of neighborhoods. It's really part of the process to define that. Mm -hmm. Some of these villages, like Prout's Neck is probably more appropriate to have a neighborhood plan rather than a village plan. So there's different, um, words to say, but it's all really dependent on the actual exercise and the public input and the existing conditions and then the future plans. I can certainly speak to the discussions that happened during the comprehensive plan um, discussion. And there was a difference between a village and the neighborhood. And the village mm -hmm. was really the very center, you know, um, with a commercial core, if you will. Um, and some of them are tiny, tiny, mm -hmm. tiny, but it was always that spot in the middle of the mm -hmm. of a neighborhood or middle of the the area it was not contemplated that that was that all of these villages are, i'm sorry all of these neighborhoods become a village in fact this this map <coughs> was actually from the 2006 comprehensive right. plan mm -hmm. um, in terms of neighborhoods but there is a recognition that there are commercial areas and then there are neighborhoods that are very distinct here um, and, and these, uh, the genesis of most of these is historic. Right. If you go way back in time, in Scarborough's history, mm -hmm. that's where these names come from and what they were, you know, commonly referred to. And maybe there was a little school in the mm -hmm. area. And so that's, you know, where they came right. from. Right. And I think it was always, it was also talked about in the comprehensive plan that there sometimes is this schism between people really firmly identifying with a area right. versus identifying with yes. on part of Scarborough. Right. And I think that the comprehensive plan really anticipated that you can do both. You can be, have a strong attachment to Scarborough as a whole. And I think that's one of the things that we talked about a lot in terms of community and, um, you know, village, village neighborhood and um, Scarborough as a whole. Mm -hmm. so I recall the conversations for the comprehensive plan and the differentiation between the villages mm -hmm. and the neighborhoods. Uh, my question had to do with, is uh, with the, and I think you answered it, Autumn, 
having to do with will we be or will the committee be revisiting uh, those discussions and that differentiation uh, as a part of this uh, process that we're reviewing right now? Yes, with each individual area. And that's why most likely I'll probably propose them to be a master plan area mm -hmm. and it's the overarching. And then within that area are different things. It's going to all be driven by growth. E or, right. <laughs> Basically. Well, John, I, how, I know you have like already like 20 million projects and things. Which one more? Um, so like, I get the urgency of the the North Star Road piece. But part of me is thinking a couple of things, specifically what ha it's been happening with the storm that we're gonna have a vulnerability assessment. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that could impact a lot of like the coastal villages and neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the Pine Point group is getting very organized and really wants a master plan in that particular neighborhood. So just curious, is it possible to prioritize that up further. It's less about growth and more about conservation and resiliency for climate change that I feel like that may need to be prioritized. I think you had it in like your we, out years, but right. I think we can move it in or even do both at the same time. I think that one's important. Probably move it in. Um, this one I think will be take longer and be more involved than North Scarborough, but that one will be more informed at the end of the vulnerability study. Okay. Uh, and that will be next June. Um, and then we're doing a climate action plan. Yeah. You're yeah. asking for that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you need to help us prioritize, yeah. but it feels like all of this will be Well, and just because in. it, you know, just because it's funded July 1 doesn't mean we have to start at yes. July 1. So yeah. I could definitely um, think about adding that one in because mm -hmm. it is a smaller area and it has a completely unique set of mm -hmm. issues. Yeah, more from a funding prioritization planning perspective. Like, does it make sense to, especially as you put together your CIP, mm -hmm. to move that in earlier rather than later? Well, don't forget the climate change is also impacting the non such. Yeah. And, sure. and right Brook. back of my house, the Red Brook. Mm -hmm. My God, you should see what it's been like this winter. It's like <laughs> reds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's because of the <clears throat> lack of snow. Well, so I mean, no, but it's, you know. No, I get it, but I'm saying, you know, yeah, normally know. you'd see it as runoff, as snow melts, but. Yeah, this is what I mean, but it's all, it's, it's all rain. rain. It's been yeah. rain and, so and the ground is so super yeah. saturated. Yeah. That's part of the change. Yeah, exactly. so right. Right. Okay. We moving on? <sighs> sure. All right. Now I got to get that page again. Uh, <laughs> Our next item is review and discuss existing parking standards and next steps. All right. So next, <laughs> now to a, a fun one. Um, <laughs> Autumn, this is the zoning section. This is the zoning right. section. So this is the existing Section 11 um, off-street parking regulations. And it's specific about the design and it's specific about how many are in um, required for each use. It has the EV ordinance. Um, it has some stipulations for if you're going to under park, how that's addressed. I would really like to fix that one. Um, there's a lot of things in it. And so what I've done, I've just given you the ordinance just to consume and want to just brainstorm about how you all envision tackling this one. We could do it um, so many different ways. We could start by looking at the use table first, or we could have some philosophical discussions on where we think parking is going in the nation and how we want it to go in Scarborough first. Um, you tell me. So that's this one's going to be a little bit lengthier, I think, because it, it really is it's more than just a, how many parking spaces are required mm -hmm. for use. It's how we feel about parking and impervious cover. It's how it affects our stormwater. And so it's it's a bigger discussion. How does this feed into sort of the conceptual conversations we had around looking at different, um, when we went and did our site tours and did mm -hmm. all that. So how, how can we incorporate some of those conceptual conversations into a parking focused conversation? Um, I don't know 
if we paid a lot of attention to parking with that tour other than where it was located, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, we didn't talk about counts or anything. We looked no, at- Yeah, I, I was kind of notating the amount of parking versus what sort of similar spaces in Scarborough might yeah. have. Very, you know, qualitatively, not, right. your point, not, not, not doing counts or anything like that, but- well, South Portland, yeah, the parking was underneath and behind. Yep. Enclosed, mm -hmm. so you didn't see it. In the apartments that we saw, again, South Park, Portland, they were, you know, pretty typical right. front and side. But it did look like those, um, um, the, the apartments that were sort of front and side of those part, uh, in, in South Portland had a lower visible number of spaces than, say, some of the, the, spa the, the spatial layouts of the parking that we saw in commercial zones in Falmouth or in South Portland, too. So, True. So yeah, Falmouth was, was big parking. Maybe lot, yeah. what you might want to see then is the comparison of what other communities are doing for parking. That might be that easier. might be easier to see. Yeah, maybe some national research on what right. parking, you know, yeah. what's going on in the world of parking because it really is changing. It, between... it really is. A lot of especially with regard to these numerical right. of yes, one yes. per X square feet yeah. or one per employer, things like that. To, to center some of that of where <laughs> It would have been in 1970 versus where it is today, oh, yeah. or going yeah. that sort of stuff. Right. Very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Part of us us being yeah. locked into the ITE standards. And, and, um, um, Falmouth. Yeah. You had shared parking. I'm assuming because mm -hmm. you had a combination of live, work, and then yep. re and retail. So that's right. Yeah. So you're you're yeah, overlapping. Had, uh, you're allowed. You're you're allowed to have mixed use parking spaces. So yeah. Back to your mixed use. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's there's also. Um, our zoning districts are pretty um, narrow, narrow, narrow. <laughs> and so we have these buckets with retail sales and services. Everything's four per a thousand, but there are like uh, ten different categories of retail. Right. And in some respects, having a basic generic bucket for zoning is nice. You don't have to worry; everything mm -hmm. falls into this, and you're good. You can do it. But parking for things are a little bit different. For instance, I have a contractor's yard going through our site plan process right now, and he's retail sales and services. He doesn't need four per thousand square feet because he, he doesn't have that many employees and he's storing equipment. That's So there's some things like that to well, look at too. It, here's my only concern about that. People go out of business. Sure. New businesses oh, come yeah. around. Right. Parking needs could be totally different. Like mm -hmm. It's... To, to me, there's a concern about um, if if we organize parking around um, specific uses. Mm -hmm. Karen has somebody who wants to come in and take over the what was well what was Wendy's, all right? Mm -hmm. Parking needs could be totally different. And they might not be able to take that square footage because we said, oh, no, you have to have so many spaces and it's not available there. Yeah, but the good news is, you know, change of use means um, they have to go through uh, the town. They have to go through a process. And then if they couldn't meet the parking standards, they would get they wouldn't be able to do that use. Right. Or they'd well, have to and, see, and, that, and so I totally agree with you. That's yeah. the flip side. I have want to address that, too. Yeah, I have um a hard time when you have a retail strip center yep. say that has 10 uses in it and somebody wants to go in that's a little more intense and suddenly they can't because right. the parking so i would like to address that too yeah. to alan's point and uh rachel has her hand up rachel yeah. uh thank you the um I, and alan what you brought up is really the case of cafe luna as i recall when they first came to us um, they had postulated that what they would have there and what we considered was a bakery slash oh. delicatessen with very few inside spaces. In other words, while while they they did have some inside uh, seating and some um, on the apron outside, uh, it, it was not um, as intensive as it is now. They, when they built it then, uh, and we started to occupy it, uh, the use had changed. It was still food, but all of a sudden it was a gathering space where people came to sit and stay. 
uh, rather than come in and grab a couple of bagels and get on their way. Uh, mm -hmm. It was supposed to be breakfast and lunch. So as we see it now, technically it's the same because it's still food, but uh, the parking is inadequate. When the planning board looked at it, the parking was adequate for what they said it was going to be the use. So that's exactly what can happen. And I don't know how you how you deal with it, but it does happen when a use all of a sudden changes. They did not come back to us uh, when they changed the use of the type of food. I don't think they had to, uh, but now we we see cars all over the place. So I don't I don't know how you deal with it, but I I do think uh, it's it's a very valid point to start to think about what happens when what we were told was going to be something, or maybe was something for five years, and all of a sudden business is sold and it's something else. So I, I do think that uh, <laughs> needs to be a subject of discussion in, in this parking area. And, and to your point, Rachel, our guests uh, in, in conversation, at least the conversation in my neighborhood has been, Oh, I think it was more of a cultural community response to the to what they were doing um, that maybe has changed what ha actually happened. I mean, I think they opened because I think the owner lives in our neighborhood. Anyway, um, it was opened as a breakfast lunch place, but people in our neighborhood have said, oh, well, we want to go and support yeah. and right. now we want to hang out. I mean, I think they, they created an opportunity um, that I think has also perhaps gone on at Scarborough Browns where people right. say, well, this is a place to gather where I can have a small business meeting right. um, that wasn't possible before yep. because it's less crowded down there in terms of getting to it in some ways than Scarborough Browns is with all the congestion <laughs> around Oak Hill. I mean, th does that make sense? But I, Oh, I, yeah. No, I think that's exactly what's going on there. So what I'm not I sure that the business themselves changed. I, I think people's response to it was different than so with, what was anticipated. And with that, it just means we really need to take a look at what's required for right. our restaurants and right. food establishments. Exactly. And maybe there's some different levels and maybe we're just under parked. Right. Well, the Nonsuch River right. Brewery. It's just that under exactly. Exactly. So we have a, there's there's a difference between like a restaurant where you're sort of in one car going. And right. I think that's the way we thought about it. 20 years ago. Yeah. And nowadays it's like, no, you've got a table of four seats, four but there's four people. different cars kept coming and meeting, right. particularly with none such brewing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Happy hour. Everybody drives to meet. But it's also a, a place where, you know, if you're working from home yep. and you want to get well, together with somebody. Clients, or I meet with exactly. Clients, you have lunch. So, so, so I think yeah. culturally we've The changed. positive is it's a use that's well accepted and absolutely. people are excited about and we need more of, but let's right. make sure we're not creating a parking problem exactly. for ourselves yeah. in the future. Right. When we approve that, right. and give them a little time to smooth out that right. the, the crowds for the first two weeks, three weeks, people are, are so easing well, a little bit. There's so. a bakery in Kittery that probably is the reason we live in Maine. Um, <laughs> we to, I didn't it's know that. Always crowded. Yeah. It's Lills. It's downtown. I mean, in the winter, it's the only draw. But every time I've been in there, it's always it's, they may never slow down. You know, for their benefit, I hope that they stay mm -hmm. super yeah. busy. Um, but providing for parking, we can definitely figure out how to fix that. So we don't have the same problem come up again. Because hopefully we'll get more establishments yes. like that. That's again, what oh, I think. I know. The game plan. But, but I think to, to the point of looking at something in the 70s versus now, oh, yeah. we've got a different cultural yeah. situation yeah. Oh, going yeah. on oh, than, yeah. than earlier. Mm -hmm. well, and part of this, this is why I'm, I'm on the mixed use train here. Um, if you have mixed use areas, you can have multiple places in one spot a cafe luna also mm -hmm. some doctor's offices also some law firms or, or whatever right. Right. and and they're overlapping and non-additive um parking uses so that way you have multiple um uh, uh, uh multiple uses um in a smaller footprint with less impervious cover but still serving the same amenities that the town mm -hmm. are looking for so um, it should, I, I want to keep that in the, in the mix too, that, that we should be finding ways to encourage multiple or co-location of 
commercial services and then other things to allow for reduced absolute number of parking spaces um, and not because part, because part of the Luna problem is you basically got one one restaurant in one building right. that has to use all the parking that it wants. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and there's that little sports store next to it, but that's not what's driving the park there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I come back and say, your question <laughs> was. <laughs> how do we attempt this animal? So, <laughs> how do we want to go at this? These are, my, these are my notes. So first, we're going to have a little bit of a philosophical discussion and some national trends. Um, and then we're going to look at some comparison of standards nationally and across communities close to us. And then um, we'll big bullet, big buckets are... Um, shared parking, mixed use parking, minimum and maximum parking, and then change of use that we want to address too. So, and all this won't be done for next month. So, <laughs> this will be Although I will say, Build Maine a couple of years ago uh -huh. did a whole um, day, they devoted one of their um, years to parking. Uh -huh. And so, there's a bunch of oh, really man leading national experts that came in and did presentations nice. and let's see if we can find some of those because that would be oh that'd, that'd be, be great easy was that yeah. part of the call plan <coughs> well, maybe we get statistical data similar to that with our from our consult i can't remember i think you know what i think you might be right i'll go back and look i'll go back and look i'll look for the build main material okay. as well right. Because that was some eye opening. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> Details like that, it comes in. <laughs> sort of a, a running question on this, I, I, I think, would be helpful. And maybe speak to someone Martin was saying earlier, too. Um, I think having parking standards in the design standards and parking standards in the zoning law are, are it's probably not the right way to go. You want to have one or the other. Um, and I'm not sure what the right answer is. It could be yeah. either one, but, but yeah. it feels like having them in two places is. Is, is a recipe for disaster. For, yeah, exactly. For, 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 for loopholes. They have yeah. to they have to stay in zoning because okay. parking applies to everything, and everything is not um, not required to go through site plan or subdivision. Yeah. So the grand scheme is to someday have a unified development plan, mm -hmm. and so there's actually site plan, subdivision, zoning, it's yeah. all one thing. Yeah. And so it's really easy to cross reference because yeah. there's only one section and it's not. Yeah. But for the way it is now, it'll have to stay in zoning. So what will stay in site plan are just those design features. But yeah, to your point, we may pull all of that and put it in this parking chapter. I would encourage us to kind of think in that direction just so that we reduce the Possibility exactly the um, portion of loopholes or yeah or whatever we're it just, or at least it's reference just yeah. confusion it, it's a great example like landscaping we had a landscaping standards and then we had landscaping and parking lots that was in the yeah exactly. and so oh, putting kind of yeah. I like to have everything here's your landscaping and there's no other surprises anywhere else if you oh, get yeah. this one down you got it and so to your point parking yeah and, and if it has to be in zoning then let's do what we can to. <laughs> put everything we can in the zoning records um, and, and that way yes. when, if you go to if you go to zoning section 12 mm -hmm. you'll find the vast majority of what you need mr developer or minister yes uh, or, or land well, the planning or, board that's what right. makes it easy for the planning board yep. if it's easy to reference mm -hmm. right. or to yeah. use right. when like dealing with the developers yeah. Yeah, yeah it's very clear yeah so okay so yeah just keep that in the back of our heads as we're going through this yeah. All right, that's all I have. Um, and Robin has left. She had to go. I guess I just had another question regarding the parking situation and just talking out loud, mm -hmm. probably more than anything else. Um, is would it make sense, and is it something that can be done? where if you have parking assigned parking spaces on a piece of property that is otherwise not expandable mm -hmm. in other words there's not enough parking excuse me there's not enough land to add additional parking 
Right. Like nuns, so. like nuns. Like nuns. Well, or they went across the street. But so, but, but, still, but like that, like yeah, that. Originally, can you restrict additional or different businesses coming into a place from a parking standpoint by by saying that whatever parking was made available when the space was built is the maximum amount that can be allowed or a business is not allowed to be able to come in that doesn't provide adequate parking that the that the property doesn't provide adequate parking can we can we restrict that i mean mm -hmm. karen you probably know that well, I think There's the answer is yes. We already we already do, already do that. We're yeah. already doing yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Correct. Oh, so it's like a future ordinance. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, the ordinance says if the use is A, you need X <laughs> parking spaces. If the use is B, you need Y. So if I buy the cafe Moonlight <clears> and I want to turn it into office space, I'm going to have to go and get, I think, review under the yes. ordinance to make sure my change of use. Oh, All right. yes. so, so let's, so in effect, let's the ordinance that. imposes the restriction. And you let's would be all set because yours problem. is less yeah. than Cafe Luna. Right. But right. if it was the reverse, yeah. you'd have Cafe yeah. Luna would not be able to go in. So if it was parked for Rick's office yeah. at a different rate, and that's what I'm talking about. I want us to be able to right. figure out yeah. a way to make change of use also occur, especially in um, large scale retail, like strip mall mm. sort of situations. But it, and I like that piece of property as an example, mm -hmm. right? What if the business next to Cafe Luna changes what they have and require less parking mm -hmm. than the space that's there now or the business that's there now? And then you want to just give them the assigned spaces. Can you spaces. give them some of those spaces? Um, I don't. I, I feel like it done. would depend on who, how the ownership and everything mm -hmm. is worked out. Because both of those spaces are leased. Right. I mean, the, the, so uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Harbor Fish property is kind of an interesting example. Uh -huh. When that was approved, I mean, nobody goes into Harbor Fish or Stone, what's the name of the school? Bro Bro they don't go in to hang out. They go in to get something and leave. And leave. But then they built the pizza place. Yeah. yeah. Which now obviously people go and eat and stay more. I don't know what the, I don't know how that ownership is structured, but I suspect it's one owner mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. leases those spaces. I don't know what happens. Well, then you got the, then you got the help, the, the gym, yeah. and, you yeah. 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 and then you're going to have uses. the senior housing. And I think it comes <laughs> down to the new tenant needs to make sure that there's adequate parking under the ordinance. And if not, they can't go there unless but, they can get some. But yeah. you could also have uh, using the Luna situation, you know, which is a deli bakery, you know, thing. You could also have a, a a brewery that decides to go in there that has totally different table cover. Sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you've got you've got same same use. You've mm -hmm. just got a different concentration of what's happening well, there. Actually, brewery is a change of use because it's a it have if they're brewing, well, they'd be small batch, but right. But say it's just a bar, yeah, yeah okay. and they just okay. wanted they. Yeah. It's based on still the number of sure. bar stools and employees and but all again, that. But again, table yeah. cover yeah. also impacts so yeah. many I, people. It's funny the little cafe. I didn't know it was there a few weeks ago. And drove past. It. Sorry, I said I had some friends over for dinner. I said, why don't we go to lunch? My friend said, "No, you can never get a parking no. spot. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen." But you, could, but, but you could bike there. Yes, and you can. and we can walk there from our neighborhood. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I can. Yeah. <laughs> so you take my parking spot. That's why we need buses. Right. Which right. you got next? Next to Sedco meeting, you can park and then walk over because there's yeah. a trail back behind the pump Army station. Oh, there. that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, okay, Marvin. <laughs> Hi, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Autumn, you mentioned something about the uh, off-street parking regulations discussions uh, at this point being even philosophical. Uh, and I don't think my question falls into that category. But I'm wondering, 
uh, whether off-street parking regulations include guidelines or if those guidelines exist somewhere else uh, having to do with total impervious surface in Scarborough in relationship to uh, what our discussion touched very briefly on earlier, having to do with uh, conservation and et cetera, et cetera, uh, sea level rise, uh, impervious surfaces in relationship to all of the wet areas that exist in Scarborough. Is that a is that a discussion to have during this process or not? I think so. Yes, I think it's definitely a consideration because we can't just say, "Oh, let's just max out parking," and yeah. then we don't have to worry about it. We we have to take into consideration impervious cover and those conservation constraints and potential wetland buffers. So, yeah, it's definitely part of it, Marvin. And, and, and Marvin, when you say total, you're talking. I I hear you say total, and I hear you that I think it's um not just with, on a specific piece of property, but the aggregate of all impervious across Scarborough. Is that, is that right? Yes, I, you know, I did a search on the PDF that's up in my, on my computer, just using the word impervious, and I'm sure that's not the right word, but it doesn't come up anywhere in this section of the, of the, uh, of the PDF, for example. But the answer to your question, Peter, is yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Marvin, to your point, and I'll just throw this out here. Um, I talked to the Conservation Commission and threw it out to them. I'm going to throw it out to you guys, too. Most zoning districts in town allow up to 85% impervious cover. That is extremely high for yeah. a community that is considering yeah. all the other things that we are. So impervious cover is addressed in each zoning district. Um, and you, you may have it in some packets at home, but it was in a table that yeah. I showed you all a couple months ago. Um, that That's is a conversation that while parking parking will contemplate it the parking could also say hey if we had fewer if we had less area to work with the building is going to be decreased and the parking is going to be decreased and the planning board sees this a lot where they have maxed out the building footprint and the parking footprint and there's just no room to do anything else and so um it's all combined but impervious cover is definitely one yeah. that I feel like will be addressed and that this will be re a reflection back and forth of that. Can we process. touch on it too in landscaping? Mm, we we made landscaping match the impervious now. Yeah. But so there's another reason if if impervious yeah. gets to change in zoning, we're gonna have to update landscaping. It's a constant right. Right. process. Yeah. It'll never be perfect. It'll never be perfect. <laughs> and as we change and improve one section, we have to make another section that's why i really Spiritual. wanted the baseline consolidation so i know what yeah. i'm changing <laughs> i know it's that crazy. was really um the reason for all this but okay eric do we have any members of the public we do not thank you staff update autumn Let's see, staff update. So ordinance committee next week, mm -hmm. I have um, CPACE, which is going back again for a review. That's from sustainability committee. Oh. And then um, recreation impact fees and two new traffic impact fees. The first look at those, um, those impact fees are also going to transportation at the end of the month to look at. We, um, the environmental standards will probably go to ordinance committee next month, I'm assuming. That came out of Conservation Commission. Yeah. And also be looking to for short-term rentals later in the summer. Actually, that may come up sooner rather than later, okay. but stay tuned. Okay, so <laughs> short-term rentals is still on um, the plan and budget process. So lots of things, lots yeah. of things happen. Okay. Carol, we're always busy. Um, I think in May we're going to have another joint meeting with the uh, SEDCO. It's going to have another joint meeting with the Gorm Economic Development Corporation, of which um, the Gorm Connector will be a primary discussion. Right. Can I come to that meeting? Of course you can. Okay, I'm Are you myself. involving Westbrook at all? We will be. This was okay. this was um, sort of arranged as a. Yeah. First of all, started out with Gorm and Scarborough, right. and I know that Gorm is looking at doing a joint meeting with Westbrook, and then we'll sort of okay. all get together. Right, Does just Tom doing... Boyer come to the meeting? Uh, he did last time. Okay, he okay. did at the at the joint meeting we had okay. in December. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I know I'm all already hearing from already have been from my neighbors up on 22 in particular their concern about the turnpike connector which they get most of them get the need for something because they are like me you can't get out of your driveway sure. certain times of the day and now it's getting more even all day different but it's more on yeah um the that that it with they're talking about doing ramps down to 22 mm -hmm. which i have mixed feelings about sure. too because it's like well just going to dump everything back in there again but their concern is that that'll just lead to that becoming all commercially developed and then and then they don't want them in the village. So just so you right. know, I'm already sure. sharing it. <laughs> sure. Right. I, mean, I I think the turnpike has always been clear that they didn't want, um, you right. know, the nodes have to be very specific about where development happens. Yes. So, so I, think I just. Only two right now, right? They're, they're playing yes. Two or, the running they're hill playing. up, which is, yeah. I'm here about the neighbors from that one. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, and and of course, a lot of people are like, well, why have any, you know, if you're trying to get traffic out of here, you know, just so you, I'm just bringing yeah. that right. up. Right, so, right. And I think our focus is really going to be more about, um, you know, the economic opportunities and right. leaving the hard, you know, <laughs> work of uh, Thanks, Karen. planning. <laughs> <laughs> saying right. hey this is what and this they don't mind that the concept yeah. of village is intriguing yeah. to them yes but they don't want you know walmart you know right. they don't want to see big right. development in there they want to keep it rural right feeling village exactly. whatever and so. that's what i think okay. the says too yeah. so yeah. we would be okay. we're bound by that discussion. just so you know yeah that's good info I mean, Gorham may have a different yeah. idea. That's what I think well, what we're no. going to learn is what Gorham's you tell concepts all are. Together. Okay. <laughs> that will strike fear in Tom's life. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't want it to make it a line right. where Gorham exactly. is this and then we're this. No, right. I, I, think, I think you'll find that yeah. Gorham's I shouldn't speak for Gorham, but <clears throat> from what I know, people I know of Gorham, that they 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 also would like to see it be you know a right. village mm -hmm. yeah right yeah and i think there was a lot of alignment between the two communities yes. yeah when was it was it five years ago it was more than joint, that oh was my goodness <clears throat> there's a you know a joint yeah. a joint task force committee whatever right. between gorm residents and right. scarborough residents about the grange, right? yeah. yeah the grange a few yeah. times yeah all set karen yeah sorry it's your turn. What do you want me to say? I, you he, guys bring things to is, me. Is, <laughs> that no. makes it easy. I can just go. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, um, yeah, this, I think this is good that we're getting this cleaned up and a little more <laughs> focused and updated. Um, so we're very happy to work with you guys on on that and you know this long range planning committee is so important people don't realize that so john you got anything i mean i think for me as i was saying you know we're about to get into the budget process so really <laughs> just kind of going That's there right. and you know i think budget and revaluation oh yeah are probably going to be the biggest things that you be talking right. about i would think in the next Couple weeks, so I would I would encourage everybody from this group as we go through that process and as the different departments that you guys support present that if you have something you want to endorse as a resident or even as a committee that you want to just put your your names behind, like that's always super helpful. We don't hear enough yeah. from people from the committees and or residents throughout the budget process. So I'm hoping if there's something you guys see that you feel super passionate that we yeah. can do as a community engage the committee so that we have that to and the council so that we have that as we make decisions. It's going That's to be a real good here. point because mm -hmm. we hear just from the naysayers, you yeah, know, right. when they exactly. tend to be louder than they should be because they don't mm -hmm. represent mm -hmm. everybody, you yeah. know. Um, and yes, they, you know, some of what they bring up is true and we need yeah. to keep an eye on it. But yeah. To, to weigh in. And yeah. as John said, this budget's going to be tough. As I've been telling people, we need to put this budget as flat as possible, given yeah. this shift we're going to see with, with the yeah. uh, reval. It's very unique, right? Because yeah. we have the reval happening, 
you know, a lot of people are going to lose the benefit of the senior tax right. state mm -hmm. program. Um, already have. Um, yeah, yeah, already have. Jim. And then <laughs> again, we still have needs as a community you want to invest in. So with those things in mind, how do we keep the tax rate at a reasonable level? And it's going to be so different. Like every year, right? It's usually like 3%. Everybody can anticipate a 3% increase in their tax bill. This year, depending on how your house value changes you, compared to your house value, <laughs> That it's going to be so unique and so yeah. we have to make sure people understand that you know i'm just using you as a i know because you know where i live yeah now. yeah <laughs> like for sure you've been like the, the the truth is is i know i know this is the case for me i've been paying probably less of my fair share of taxes because i know the values in my neighborhood oh. have gone up significantly so i anticipate the rebound i'm gonna pay a higher share than I would have if we just kept maybe I mean, I, that's my right. my hypothesis that's I'm why that you got to keep the budget as flat yeah. as possible because anyway because yeah, 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 don't yeah, forget yeah. that mill rate drops probably yeah. about five well, that least. was used last time and ours went up four or five thousand yeah. dollars that's because of how it goes yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't talk to me about the, the, mill, rate. the mill rate is like it's Ten, hard, it's not -ish. A, right. yeah. it'll be tenish next year so again I think it's just going to be a year of choices right where we're just going to have to make thoughtful choices as best we can. And the yeah. more we hear from people around what they think are the most thoughtful choices, I think we'll right. guide us. That'll help. Well, and to your point, and I'll crop up here with transportation type news, is that we are now sending a uh, traffic calming policy. Oh, right. It's forward. And that came directly out of particularly the Maple um, mm -hmm. Street folks, but also others and, and came out of, started with the council corner when we had yeah. it on transportation. Yeah. And so, yeah, public information and input does make a huge difference. Yeah. And so we're looking at developing, well, we have put forward a whole process. Yeah. And somebody asked, well, does that mean you get to say, well, we think we need? No, what you need to do is identify the problem. Yes. Right? And, then and then through the process, and stay the solution the will, be, will yeah. be developed. But yeah. that's exciting and continuing to work on the traffic. Can we do some of the plan 14? No, I'm just kidding. Sure. <laughs> Do you have any? You have to get your neighbors together. No, you need to put a speed bump. Yes, yes. Oh, the only thing I would oh. say, and oh. may, this may not um, hit any of you, but looking for bids on Close the Gap in May, which is oh, cool. Eastern Trail. Yay. So cool. Yay, that's okay. awesome. Finally. Cool. <laughs> Rachel. Yeah. Um, at the last meeting of the planning board, we had a wonderful example of what happens when an applicant is willing to work with everybody, uh, with the planning board and with the planning staff and with the neighborhood. Uh, and so we're very pleased to say that rugby is coming to, uh, to Scarborough. Oh, that's right. That's the, right. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, they have purchased property on Two Rod Road. I, and Two Rod Road has always been a little bit of a development along there. It's always been a little bit of a lightning rod. And the community uh, along Two Rod has frequently come out with concerns about the development of the Beach Ridge Speedway, uh, water quality, and other things uh, along there. And at the, the meeting that we had, I looked out at a whole host of neighbors from Two Rod Road showing up. Uh, thinking, oh, okay, here we go. And they all spoke up in approbation of the application. <laughs> to thank the uh, applicants for working with them to, to help them understand what was going on. Uh, <laughs> and again, they all spoke in, in support. Um, so the applicant had, had done its reach out duty and had explained a lot of things the community had asked for in turn and the planning board had asked for in terms of water analysis. Um, so we're very pleased with that. We did find out sort of what happened to the bodies that were buried there. Uh, <laughs> literally and they disappeared sometime around 1947. Um, but if you take a look at uh, the material there, you will find a wonderful story about graveyards in Scarborough going back to the late 1940s. Um, so that is that is passed. Uh, we worked through some concerns about encroachment on a, 
uh, vernal pool. We've worked through concerns about recharging the water table, the water level in the wetlands. Uh, we worked through concerns about allowing the critters a uh, way to pass uh, under a, a trail that was going to be built. So the the applicant the applicant really did everything right, and um, I I'm very pleased. The, the, they're coming. It's uh, going to be a wonderful addition to Scarborough. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. Marvin, you may have your mute, your mute is on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, I have nothing to report. I think uh, Portia covered transportation. I was traveling during the transportation committee meeting, so I could not attend. Um, it's always a pleasure being here. I will miss it. I will miss the uh, camaraderie, uh, the intelligence and the discussion. Uh, and thank you all very much. I, I'm honestly, I may be back next, uh, next month as well. You may not have gotten rid of me quite yet, depending on <laughs> what the council's done or does. But uh, just appreciate all of you very much. I don't think any of us all get enough appreciation. So that's my message. Thank you all. all right, Thank thanks. you. Sorry. Thank Sorry. You. Rick? No. Peter? No, not here. I only have a question to staff and to Jean Marie. Mm -hmm. Do we have any applicants for the long range? I have no planning? idea. I I think that there, sure well. I think there's a couple. I believe so. I haven't seen them, but I, I think yeah. there are a few names. Okay. So just, I'm sorry. just I one. Think, <laughs> I think I'm not sure, but I think I we'll, think there are, we'll, but yeah. We'll be okay. taking care of. We'll find some. Yeah. <laughs> Take we'll a find it. I'll pick up the phone with me. <laughs> and, and yeah, That's ideally it works. I want to be I've, invited. I've told I've requested of the chair that Portia is our first alternate that she be moved up. Um, yeah, and, yes. that and my, I would recommend that was my staff recommendation. Yes. So then yep. we we have um, another alternate right now, Robert Audlin, and then we would need another alternate. Right. Yeah. We hopefully would love transportation. And hopefully, <laughs> right. Well, no, as an alternate, you can't be the liaison. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna look. I'm gonna Peter. <laughs> Uh, it I, is. I, I, know, lo I, know. I love transportation. Yeah. I would, uh, yeah. If I it's worked on this committee, committee I would seem to be committee. on transportation, but it's, it really comes down to a time thing. So yeah. um, I'll, I'll take what, when does the committee meet? Transportation committee is the fourth Tuesday and it is in the evenings. So okay. it's, um, I think it's like 6 30 to 8. Yeah. Let, let me give some thought, but I, I, I could, let me next <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. No, no, I, I, I really can't today, but. Next sure. meeting, I'll come back. You'll know what yeah, the deal yeah. is. Yeah. It's a great committee. Yeah. Oh, it is Thanks. a great committee. Autumn, I have a I have a question about Robert, uh, now that you mentioned it. And I don't know if now's the time. Obviously, we're about to adjourn. Uh he he I don't know what the rules are about the consecutive meetings you miss, but uh he's he since he came on the committee last what, October? Uh, uh, November, I believe. But he's only November. been to one. Yeah. Yeah, he's only been to one and he's missed three in a row, I think. So uh it's not so gone I, unnoticed. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I I don't know how you address that, but uh it's it's an issue, I think. Thanks. Our next meeting, I believe, is April the twelfth. Well, mm -hmm. the second Friday of April. Yes. Where did yes. spring go? <laughs> yeah. So that what I have that and I have. for that meeting, we will talk about parking. Hey. Okay. I Yay. may need to pre-notice that I'm not going to be around because I am our council presentation. That's going to be too. I'm I'm asking for mine to be. I'll take I will miss the next meeting. It's the day off before April vacation and we're right. traveling that day. So, okay. Yeah. And I will try to make it by Zoom. Okay. That's it. That's good. I'd entertain, entertain a motion <laughs> to adjourn. So moved. Peter, Sorry. is there a seat? Thank you, Marvin. Any discussion? Seeing none. <laughs> <laughs>
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I'm um, seeing. Oh. Um, let me go do a roll call. Um, Marvin. Oh yeah, right. Before you do. <laughs> yes. I need to move Portia up to a voting member. Oh, because Robin. Robin is no longer on. Right. You oh, can. Right. Or you still have a quorum. It's up yeah. to you. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, yes, yeah. go ahead. Marvin? Yes. Uh, Portia? Yes. Peter? Yes. Rick? Yes. Alan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Special uh, left out.